five years to, to date. And uh, uh, this is a screenshot from uh, yesterday's event uh, uh, featuring one of our projects on the left. We organized a musical residence in Jasnaya Poliana in the House Museum of Lev Tolstoy. Uh, where we invited five musicians and uh, they in that uh, arts residence uh, have recorded a label which we presented yesterday, two days ago. Uh, so using this platform uh, and, the and the small media outlet, uh, uncomparable with uh, larger media giants, uh, we are creating a, very, a lot of interesting things and people reading this uh, website, they use it uh, and publish their own text, can use our resources uh, and we are always accessible, we, all, we are always uh, open for uh, create, uh, creative cooperation. On the right, uh, we, you see the example of an intellectual culinary show, which uh, we uh, hosted. Uh, we only provided hosting platform, and uh, the uh, readers have organized and created this product themselves. This is a small list of projects uh, that grew uh, on this platform. So the readers, so the audience, without any contacts with myself or editorial staff, create their own products. Uh, such as music festivals, uh, using platform for psychotherapy. Uh, in Russia, a project I will feature, present later, uh, book distribution society, and, uh, and they even have their own radio station. This is uh, the, a photogram from a, a one of our parties in Moscow three years ago. This was a project which uh, was created by one of our readers, one of our authors. Next project uh, uh, of using the platform by small edition is uh, called inrussia.com uh, that united young Moscow-based videographers, uh, people who create video content, also photo content. And uh, at the time, we understood that uh, in that in the city, we had uh, a critical mass of very talented people that work with images and created to uh, decided to create a website for them a website where they uh, could offer their images to Russia uh, their vision of Russia uh, something that you cannot see in uh, news uh, in the political outlets uh, featuring alternative uh, uh, view of what's happening in Russia uh, through, from real people. Using this platform, we created a distributed studio. Uh, we, we had a pool of 100 authors that uh, using our website could uh, 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 get uh, could uh, uh, si uh, get orders uh, on a commercial basis, uh, so we were providing uh, work to people and new opportunities to our uh, community. Uh, another, uh, we, we would like to use the same principle uh, in our work and the Art and Culture Development Foundation under the Ministry of Culture of the Republic of Uzbekistan and our department, the Publishing and Communications Department will be will will create uh, new communities uh, and uh, we expect uh, many communities to be created that will be united by using the principles of uh, uh, of uh, uh, principles of uh, bringing together different publishers including online publishers thank you for this opportunity to make a presentation to you thank you very much for your attention and i wish you a uh, very fruitful uh, two three days and uh, 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 meaningful uh, cooperation and conversations. Thank you. Спасибо, Фуркаты, спасибо, Ратна, за ваши uh, презентации. Мы получили много примеров того, насколько важны коммуникации в секторе и много примеров того, как мы можем строить сети, развивать связи через нашу работу при помощи технологий. Итак, 
Наш следующий достащик, докладчик Анастасия Тарасова. Она является директором э, театра Артишок в Казахстане. Она uh, она uh, able to be one of the first speakers representing Kazakhstan, my city and my industry. I am Anastasia Tarasova, I'm the managing director and actress at Artishok Theater. And today, uh, using the experience of, uh, thanks to the experience of our campaign, I was a company, I was invited to speak about the audience development processes because this is something that we do on day to day basis uh, that sets us new horizons uh, and new uh, leads to new discoveries i believe that every organization strives to find new audience new to uh, bring new uh, viewers to the uh, theater to uh, shows and i believe that our experience for many of you will be uh, useful uh, and interesting i will uh, uh, let me tell you about the those, uh, our theater this is the first uh, independent theater company in kazakhstan we will be celebrating our 20th anniversary next year and uh, we are one of the oldest but at the same time um, let's, say, let's say mature theaters in the mature independent theaters in kazakhstan the first theater that started promoting inter independent experimental theater in almaty in kazakhstan in general and uh, uh, we were uh, founded in two th year 2001 and the niche that the theater found uh, to itself at the time the uh, street improvisation theater and author seat was empty at the time it was an, uh, an empty uh, a space for the theater and for our audience, uh, people, spectators, uh, ordinary citizens of the city never before uh, were exposed to this format of theater and of course uh, we were one of the first uh, uh, fa uh, facing the challenge of developing audience, presenting a new theater and uh, people were not used to. These are the pictures from our first uh, street uh, shows. Uh, our first shows were uh, outdoors. We just came to the uh, most crowded streets of Almaty and people were reacting in uh, unexpected ways. Uh, people do not did not understand that this is indeed a theater. They didn't know how to communicate with the artists. Uh, whether uh, they didn't know whether these people in costumes are sane or not, and uh, how to c they didn't know how to talk, to interact with them. And uh, over the 20 years, uh, uh, has uh, progressed a lot to date, and. Uh, this was a baseline where people were shocked and uh, uh, the thinking we, uh, we are uh, crazy people at the time we were starting this. Uh, today, people, uh, our audience uh, has uh, matured, uh, has uh, developed loyalty to different experimental projects and formats. And uh, but still, uh, there is a lot of uh, work uh, uh, that we have to do uh, in Almaty every day here. Another for major step forward was uh, in uh, in the theater creating its own space. It wasn't a traditional theater setting. I uh, uh, that are safe. Uh, you come to a safe theater. You sit in a, uh, in a comfortable couch. Uh, you have a curtain. You have a show, and you are feel safe. You are in safety of a spectators uh, uh, area. A safe. Uh, uh, it's a spectator experience, uh, comfortable, traditional theater experience that you get. But when we opened our platform, and it was a basement of a residential house uh, uh, where you need to uh, look for the theater, you come to uh, 
I caught you out and say, okay, okay, I, I, and uh, you discovered that the basement can be a theater too. It was a new discovery for the spectator. Today in Almaty, we have several different uh, experimental theater platforms and uh, people are more ready uh, to this, uh, to accept this format, but, uh, but uh, this platform uh, is uh, this our first platform is still active many people when they come downstairs to the basement they still uh, get shocked and uh, discover to themselves something new so the spectator in Almaty I believe uh, was uh, was uh, was uh, not uh, uh, does need more such formats no such more such platforms uh, some time ago, about five, seven, uh, for five, seven years, we used this platform and we thought that the main thing for the theater is its product, uh, the, its shows. But we did not pay a lot of attention to how, what kind of conditions we should create in our spaces for other spectators. So we spent seven years working in this fashion. And then we found out that, yes, indeed, we have developed audience, but it is the same audience. And uh, the audience, and we started thinking as to how to find new audiences. And it was back in 2010-2012 in Almaty. There were a lot of new uh, coffee houses uh, set, being set up, co-working spaces where people feel uh, comfortable and uh, find it stylish and find comfort. And we started thinking yeah, that yes, indeed, uh, theaters need to think about improving the spaces. It should not be a gray. Uh, uh, un, 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 uh, gray, gray, uninspiring uh, uh, space. Uh, they want to see uh, opportunities to spend quality time to uh, to experience the atmosphere and not only the shows. And this, then we started rebranding our small stage. We invited uh, artists that uh, uh, designed our entrance uh, facilities. We uh, we called it overhaul in Antishock. It was a public action. We were telling the spectators that we are uh, now uh, improving every corner of the seat. Uh, we are fixing the uh, wardrobe. Uh, cloakroom uh, and uh, we proposed that the spectators participate and we told them if you have uh, paint, a uh, can of paint or construction materials that you, you have in your uh, at back home, please bring it, we will find use for it. Uh, so this was the first time we started at uh, using, uh, involving spectators not as, not only as audience. Uh, but uh, gave them an opportunity to contribute to the theater and to, the, to support it. And we, uh, we were uh, making presentations on how we uh, um, dispose of rubbish, how we recarpet floors, uh, we raised the uh, ceilings, we uh, rerouted the water pipes and instead of benches that were did not have uh, backrests, uh, uh, we, pre uh, we installed chairs and these kind of small things, every step became for the spectator of something very important from the point of view of comfort. We created the ventilation uh, facility, uh, we installed ventilation through crowdfunding and uh, all these small steps were very important for the team because every step allowed us to uh, to uh, gain momentum uh, that uh, uh, that turned into a huge uh, uh, movement uh, and uh, moved us from a small chamber for 65 uh, spectators uh, brought us uh, to new levels uh, the, into our new platform, the large stage of Artishak Street uh, in Panfilov uh, Park in Almaty. They are uh, could, both stages could, are working at the, can, at the same time today. This larger stage was a very fast and uh, project, fast project, and in six months, uh, thanks to fantastic crowdfunding by the local citizens and local commercial sectors, we found uh, 
financing uh, to turn uh, a dormant uh, nightclub into a theater. And we uh, we have it is the third season that we are using this stage today. And of course, we are experiencing growth problems. The year one was theatric because all the leads, uh, people from Almaty came to see the new artichoke stage and building. And the year one was uh, was just. Uh, just a year of success but uh, during the second and third year we start to understand that the same problem we come back we need to develop our audience now we have a stage there with 150 seats we need to provide to play more shows we are independent not dependent on the state on the government we have not no uh, dotations we have no partner that would uh, cover our running costs so we had to pay the lease and unlike the smaller stage which we owned we for the first time uh, faced uh, our landlords that we needed to pay money and that found out that we need to sell a certain number of tickets and shows every year to cover the running costs and uh, therefore every spectator is important we need to sell every seat in the in the in the in the room so what we started to doing what well, this is one of our uh, most successful cases uh, which we started in the smaller stage and then moved to the larger stage this is uh, a unique case uh, uh, the, spec uh, the show called Uyad that uh, translates as shame. Uh, this is a, a show that uh, showcases uh, two parallel realities that we have in the country. The urban society and traditional rural societies that uh, has uh, that each of the societies have their own problems that do not overlap the urban society is more intellectual better educated they live uh, with their own problems and in villages the uh, concentration of their local problems uh, persists and the show says that if we if the two uh, uh, groups ignore each other something bad can happen and the, for the first time we used kazakh language as the uh, in our show, the most uh, interesting parts of the show are uh, done in Kazakh language without translation, without subtitles, and uh, our Russian-speaking audience found it uh, some, as something uh, uncomfortable and pleasant because uh, with, uh, with uh, we were thinking that uh, by uh, bringing up uh, uh, acute social. Uh, uh, topics uh, we will offend the Kazakh speaking audience, but actually it was the Russian speaking audience that was offended. They said, Where is the simultaneous interpretation? Where are the headsets? But we told them, This is an uh, artistic move. Uh, we live in Kazakhstan, we speak Kazakh, and you and the language that you ignore in taxis, uh, uh, which you consider something foreign to yourself, is actually part of your life. So we started attracting attention of spectator of the society to Kazakh language, and people started uh, uh, talking to each other. They started uh, asking their neighbors, "Can you explain what they are saying?" Or people started realizing they actually know Kazakh language. They understand the basic words. So we turned uh, our Russian-speaking audience. Uh, uh, interest in t towards the Kazakh language and we uh, attracted new crowds. In Almaty we have a lot of Kazakh speaking theaters, uh, young spectators theater, drama theater and the, and the spectators also exist in two parallel realities. Everybody has their own theater and for the first time we brought in the audience that never came to Artishok and they turned into our permanent audience because we continued this experience. We have uh, made uh, two or three or four shows with a uh, substantial element of Kazakh language and uh, this is a great uh, addition to uh, other shows that we had. This year we also started implementing education projects uh, and I'm pleased uh, to 
uh, be invited uh, to this conference and, uh, and when Rachel said this morning that a lot of uh, attention is being paid to creative education, we as a theater are also thinking about this this season. Because every season we start sit and plan the shows, the premieres that we are going to present next year. But this year we decided that we uh, will not focus on theater production. We will focus on education. Because if we as a theater will not engage in education project, we may have to close not because of lack of funding or lack of ideas. We may close because we do not have as, as a staff. Uh, we are experiencing a huge uh, deficit of professionals in every uh, sector. So we created three education projects. First is a light, uh, light tra uh, lighting, pro lighting training, uh, theater management training, and uh, one of the main courses uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, for the is the acting and directing course. This is a two-year-long education project funded by a grant. We uh, we brought together a group of students and uh, started this process. Uh, the students are now uh, studying in the theater as an alternative to a formal university-based education. Uh, they we run classes every day. But what we faced. Uh, uh, when we first announced uh, this uh, incredible offer, uh, we uh, found out that we there were no applications. We were uh, we were quite shocked. Uh, we were sitting there waiting for weeks, and no applicants were coming. We are offering something incredible for free, and there are no applications. We, of course, uh, analyzed the situation. We understood that, uh, in principle, uh, a profession of a theater director is dying profession. Because in our theater, we do not have young uh, generation of uh, directors. We do not know where to find them. They are not coming from theater academies to our theater. We, the state, uh, uh, have to work with a single director. Now, of course, we can invite directors from Europe, from Russia, but we don't uh, see this as a solution. We, our solution is uh, to bring up, bring up a new generation of uh, Kazakh directors that will, will live and work in the country and uh, raise the local problems. But since the profession of a theater director is not of high status, there are no uh, celebrities, uh, celebrity uh, theater directors uh, that people print. Uh, the uh, ho ho people print their faces on their T-shirts. Uh, so this is uh, deemed as a profession for uh, old people, elderly people sitting in dusty uh, uh, old, uh, uh, halls and uh, creating uh, shows. And we came, uh, we developed a project which we called Open Lesson, like a, a trial lesson, which you always have any. Uh, a theater studio that uh, people are offered for free. So we uh, created an Opal lesson uh, with elements of training, uh, elements of exercises to show, demonstrate to people what theater is about, and uh, to, in an attempt to make an impression. And we decided to go to several non-theatric spaces of Almaty, such as literary clubs, bookstores. Uh, uh, street sh uh, street uh, street cinema shows and uh, shopping malls, and uh, we came up with the format as if we were the uh, admissions uh, committee, whereby uh, people would get uh, would pl uh, play a, uh, a game of admission to theater institute, uh, so that people can uh, sit in a mock up. Uh, mock mock up uh, uh, test and people who never thought about the theater being an important life uh, element of their life that came to watch a movie uh, they were inspired and became our students this is the most incredible victory that we were able to uh, achieve uh, this is yet another uh, project uh, that we started this fall, 
we uh, decided that the, for the opening uh, we will create this challenge. In Almaty, we don't have uh, we don't have theaters festivals. We've had none for the last two three years, and uh, no major events were organized in Almaty. And we believe that the theater festival is uh, something that our for our need to our industry is a systemic event important event and without such festivals we uh, we we start stagnating and uh, and the word festival in almaty in the la at the last in the last years has become uh, something very dramatic because uh, it, it, this season several festivals uh, that uh, uh, promoted modern uh, contemporary art. It's, uh, they announced that they will not have another round, and we and and uh, it's it sounded like any festival in Almaty is doomed. So we came up with the format uh, to a challenge uh, called the Theater Weekend. People like holidays in Almaty. They uh, people love to have good. Uh, uh, opportunities for uh, spending free time. Uh, so we uh, created this project called Theater Briefing Weekend uh, uh, to uh, to uh, get people accustomed to an idea of festival running uh, every week. Because when when you when you have festival only once a year, people tend to forget and uh, and the value would be diminished. So our experiment is to make three festivals in a season to uh, get people used uh, to uh, festivals uh, to program people that there are festivals and they are regular. The first experiment was uh, a drama weekend, and we tried to uh, change the topic of weekends. Uh, uh, so we, uh, the first uh, topic was post drama. We proposed uh, some un untraditional theaters because uh, at the time uh, the, our platform have been experimental for. Uh, for, for the uh, spectators, but we now started pushing uh, spectators toward other uh, spaces. We said our space is not the only space where theater can uh, operate, and we uh, run several shows in unusual places. And uh, spectators indeed uh, uh, had a new experience and inconvenience when they buy a ticket. They say, okay, I buy a ticket to Artishock, but I'm not going to Artishock, and they're sending me to a different address. How do I find a place? And uh, it was a big challenge for the theater to explain to people how to even find the new plat uh, platform stage. And uh, this is, was the deal breaker for many people. They were asking us, Where, when will I be able to come to your traditional uh, stage? Uh, I don't want new stages. And we, we understood that there is a lot of work to be done. So we came to the uh, city fair where people uh, uh, sell the handmade stuff, uh, they sell their crafts we were distributing we distributed leaflets on this uh, fair it wasn't revolutionary but not no other theater in Omati does it and we believe that all the institutions of arts and culture promoting their product must do it uh, uh, when you have uh, the time uh, to uh, and where you can directly tell them about what you are doing. And another situation we faced when we organized the press conference in one of uh, our press clubs. <coughs> uh, all of the directors came who we invited, and uh, just one reporter came. Uh, despite all of our uh, distribution list and the distribution list of the Kazakhstan press club, which every mass media receives, just one reporter came. And of course, we were very upset. Uh, every such situation uh, is uh, a reason for us to work on it. 
and our director Galina Pinova uh, came up immediately came up with a new action which she called a satisfaction performance I want to talk directly to our uh, viewers to our audience I want to talk to the reporters why this happening why this situation is uh, in place why do the Kazakhs uh, mass media ignore the rather large event happening in the city even though there are no festivals at all so the next day we created this performance we uh, had it twice in the lobby watch uh, the audience came and this was another information cause uh, and i want to draw your attention to the fact how we work with the media the kazakh mass media don't like to write about the theaters uh, they don't have reporters who would be interested in the theaters and who would write interesting articles in, st uh, in uh, except for the press releases which we provide to them ourselves today we came here to tashkent with my colleague olga malishva we sit together with her but whenever something is happening in the theater uh, some premiere or a new, uh, uh, a new event. We develop materials for the mass media. We write the articles ourselves. We give them uh, to the newspapers, uh, to other mass media types in order to distribute the information. Unfortunately, our experience is not something infectious at this point. We urge the community, we urge the reporters to write more about, uh, about the theater, about uh, performances and plays. August the only person who writes all of the articles for all of the newspapers but it's not even funny at this point and to us this is one of the most uh, pressing tasks we want this situation to change we want to decide how to work with the media uh, so that uh, it's uh, so that it wouldn't be us uh, writing for the media but it would be them writing actually one of the most pleasant and nice news for us every day we are thinking about how to develop our uh, theatrical space for instance this this season we decided to create a cafe we broke a wall and uh, we used uh, the former storage space for a cafe and uh, we have some small news every day they help us move ahead every day they think of how to develop our space how to market the theater not just as, as a space for viewing performance but as something else and i believe that we are successful in this thank you very much Спасибо огромное. Замечательное начало утра, замечательный доклад. И в то время, как наши коллеги готовят сцену к следующему... is special advisor to the ingenious group and also a visiting fellow to Goldsmiths University in the UK. They'll be joined by Claire de Bracoli, the British Council's Director for Arts in wider Europe, and also our colleague Dania 
Amanan Lee, co-founder and CEO of the Alolo Group in Kyrgyzstan. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, the past, the present, and the future. This quite short session has a particular purpose. And that purpose is to get us to begin to think about what future creative Central Asia has beyond today. And I'll come back to that in a second. But I want to start briefly with the past. In April, I came to Uzbekistan and I went to Samarkand. And I went in particular to see the great observatory of the very great Ulug Beg, that wonderful prince, astronomer, and patron of the arts, who lived and worked in Samarkand at the beginning of the 15th century and whose wonderful observatory was lost for 400, 500 years before it was rediscovered by an amazing Russian archaeologist in 1908. And now you can go, and everybody from the UK, I urge, if you have the opportunity, you can go to Samarkand. And there is a great museum there. And here is the point that Ulug Beg, the great astronomer, the great patron of the arts, the man who made these wonderful calculations about the astronomical world, his work in the 16th and the 17th centuries was translated into English and into French and into German. And in the great universities of Western Europe, in Prague, in Oxford, in Paris, in the 17th century, they were reading and discussing in groups of scholars about the great thinking of Ulug Beg, and so here's the point, the ideas moved from the east to the west. And we make sometimes a mistake in Western Europe in thinking that ideas only move from the west to the east. They do not. And going to that museum in Samarkand and reading about the great Ulug Beg taught me something. Actually, it changed my understanding of the history of this part of the world. So, first of all, Creative Central Asia is about the exchange of ideas. That is what it is most about. And let me come to the more recent past. So how is it that we are here today? Well, in the early part of 2017, I received an email from a man of whom I had never heard, and his name is Jim Buttery. And... Jim was then 
the head of the British Council in Almaty. He's now working in Algeria. But Jim said in this email, could we have a telephone conversation, please? Because I have this idea and my colleagues in Almaty have this idea that what we should do is bring together creative entrepreneurs, artists, and others from three countries, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Kyrgyzstan. And Martin, I would like to talk to you about how we could make this happen. And to be quite honest, when I first heard this idea, I was, um, how shall we say, a little skeptical. This was, wow, this is a really big, ambitious idea. And I decided to give it a go and to work with Jim and Galina and her other colleagues to make this happen. And here we are in year three. So year one, Astana, Nur Sultan, we have three countries involved. Year two, in Astana, Nur Sultan, we welcomed for the first time colleagues from Tajikistan. And here in year three, the family has been expanded again, and we welcome colleagues from Turkmenistan. So already, ladies and gentlemen, that idea, first developed by Jim Buttery, has been a great success. It has brought all of you together here today. But here's the point about the discussion that we're now going to start to have. Because this, is, this panel is the start of a discussion about how we move forward to some kind of future for Creative Central Asia. Why is this question important? Because Creative Central Asia was originally devised by the UK government, by the Foreign Office, by the British Council, as a three-year program. And this is the third of those three years. But everybody I know in this room and everybody I have spoken to wishes this not to be the end of something, but to be a way of enabling the, the idea and the concept to go forward and grow. So what we are going to talk about now is the beginning of that conversation. The conversation will take place over the next two days in many different rooms, in many different forums. How can we go forward? How can we enable this great, brilliant idea to have a future? Uh, and so I'm going to ask my three colleagues on the platform to give some idea of their first thoughts about moving forward. And I've asked these three colleagues in particular because they all have a different experience of working within these kind of forums internationally. So first of all, actually he's in the middle. John Newbegin, I think I'm probably right in saying has more experience of working in an area of responsibility which is extraordinarily wide, stretching from Novgorod in the west to Vladivostok in the east and Istanbul in the south, I think that's right. And then finally, 
uh, Daniel Amanaliev, who I particularly wanted to join us at the beginning of this conversation because Dan has not only with his wife Enura established and is running a very successful business. He has also in the past run another much larger and very successful business and brings to these discussions a very clear sense of commercial reality. So this is the question that I am going to pose to my three colleagues and I'll start with John. The question is this and I want you to keep it in mind for the next two days. What considerations should we have in mind when we are thinking about a future existence for creative Central Asia? John, do you want to kick off? Sure. Uh, thank you, Martin. Um, I think one of the one of the challenges of thinking about culture and creativity, is this, is this working? Okay, is that um, these two words, culture and creativity, embrace almost everything we do, almost everything we know. So thinking about what should be the future of creative Central Asia, where do you set the boundaries for your ambition and your, and your plans? And just listening to what Furkat was saying this morning and Anastasia and what Martin has just been saying, it seems to me there are, there are three issues that we need to bear in mind. One is, is what, who, and how, very simply. So this, uh, this event has grown in terms of the numbers of people attending over the last three years. It's becoming something like a community. So where do we take it next? It could be something which is about the professional development of the creative industry sector in this part of the world. It could be something about the growth of arts and cultural activity. Uh, and it could be something about cultural education, about arts education. It could be something about how creative entrepreneurs in this part of the world engage with the rest of the world. It could be something of the like the, the platform that, uh, that Farkat was talking about, Sigma, which is a, a platform for people to express their own ideas about content, to grow the whole creative sector. So there's a whole lot of questions around what this group, this community might want to do. And there's no reason why those, all those things can't be done, but I think it will be really important to decide what the key priorities are, otherwise, we'll wind up doing nothing because we try and do everything. Then secondly, who is going to do it? Uh, and as Martin said, this came as an idea from Jim Buttery at the British Council. It's gained a lot of support. Uh, it's gained financial support from the British Council and the UK government and elsewhere. But if it's going to continue, then who is going to make that happen? And then the third question is, how is it going to happen? There's a mixture of just work that needs to be done, straightforward administrative work. There's a business of raising money if there's going to be activity. There's a business of deciding whether it's going to be primarily a digital network or a physical network or a combination of the two where people get together once a year. But there needs to be some discussion about how it's going to manifest itself. So I think those are the, the three things to bear in mind, very simply. What do, what do you want to do? Who's going to do it? And how are you going to do it? Uh, and over the next two days, I think those are the things that we should try and focus on. Hello. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you. I think uh, this forum has done a great job for all of us here in Central Asia. Three years ago, we didn't hear the term creative economy here, although we were doing this job, but we didn't know. And that is very important, I think, uh, for us at the first stage to realize that we are creative economy. And uh, second, I think thanks to this forum, we started to realize that creative economy matters, that we matter, because sometimes when we are just a single gallery, a single uh, independent theater or a co-working co space, we don't realize that we are part of, of the new force that gives a chance of future economic prosperity for this region. And I believe that uh, there is no other chance for prosperity in this region. We will never become a big uh, industry or player or or anything else in the world. If we don't if we don't if we don't succeed in creativity, then I don't think this uh, region will ever uh, be prosperous. So, uh, and it's interesting that three years ago we didn't realize we are creative economy and now we are starting to realize we are the chance. So I think it's a big shift and uh, this definitely happened thanks to this forum. And uh, in my case, uh, there is no doubt that this region needs this forum very much. We must continue uh, on the one hand. And on the other hand, uh, yes, we should all be thankful to British Council, but also we need to understand that now it's time for the community to step up as well and uh, not take it for granted, but also to take leading part and uh, help with the arrangement of the forum. And uh, to my mind, there are three, there are few things that we need to have in the future. First, uh, it sh the forum should always be Central Asian. I'm very happy that today we have colleagues from Turkmenistan. This is a big, big accomplishment. Uh, I've not every sing not every Central Asian forum has Turkmenistan, and I think it, it's great. Yeah. Uh, the, and we should always be very, very Central Asian, not just uh, not focused on one country. So it's very. It's a great step to have this forum in Tashkent because we had it two times in Astana. And uh, I very much hope that next year it will happen in Bishkek. Uh, it's time to move it around Central Asia, right? I also hope that uh, one day, maybe next year already, we'll be ready to, uh, to arrange something like an award for the most creative, for the, for the you know, most noticeable creative businesses in Central Asia. I also hope that uh, these businesses, while there will be there will be definitely media coverage in Central Asia, I also hope that there will be some media coverage in Britain. Uh, something like uh, C50 creative businesses of Central Asia, yeah, in Financial Times. Why not? That'd be great. Uh, and also, I think it's time for us to turn this forum uh, into something even bigger. Uh, apart from the annual events, to have something in between the events and uh, something like a media platform. We have uh, interesting cases that Furkat was mentioning. Also, we have uh, friends from Adam Dar who are doing great uh, project in Central Asia now. They could uh, be big, big partners or there could be other players as well who could uh, support great media coverage of uh, creative businesses around Central Asia because we really, it's a big, you know, it's the only time in a year where we can meet each other, where we can realize that there is a very interesting project in, uh, in Kazakhstan or in Tajikistan or Turkmenistan. We don't hear anything about Turkmenistan. So it's a very, very big, uh, very important thing. But also, if we had uh, storytelling, you know, if we had stories about these businesses, if we could read them throughout the year, if there were awards, I think there would be much more cooperation and much more knowledge uh, about us. Um, so sometimes in these forums, my colleagues, uh, we, we, we are in Kyrgyzstan, we're a bit more crazy. We say we don't need government. Uh, we don't expect anything from our government, etc. But my colleagues from other countries, uh, they say, you're stupid, you know, government is important. Uh, okay, but I, one thing I want to say is, uh, like Mahatma Gandhi said, you know, first they ignore you. So for the moment, our governments, they don't understand that what creative economy is and at some stage when we when we become loud when we start talking about creative economy when we say 
You know, there is something common between IT companies and theaters and museums and fashion design and designers and co-working spaces. You know, we are in fact part of one ecosystem. Uh, they will start laughing at us. They will say, okay, okay, but you're not meaningful. You know, mining is important or uh, labor migrants are important, but not this uh, creativity. You know, when, when, when our people in the governments hear word creative, they think of something childish. So uh, when they start noticing us, they will laugh at us. At some stage, they will say, no, we don't need this. I, I'm, I'm sure because people, for, uh, creative people are not people who are ready to obey. Uh, so really in many countries, you know, the governments would prefer to have less creative people in the, in the country. But at some, point, at some point we will win. To have this, uh, first, yes, we realized we are creative economy. Now we need to believe that we are meaningful. We are the driving force for this region, for our countries. And we should be loud inside our countries. And we should speak in, inside our countries. We should participate in the forums, give interviews. Which when we, whenever we talk with someone, we should explain that we are not only a design bureau or a gallery. We are part of creative economy. And creative economy is important, very important for Uzbekistan, for Tajikistan, for Turkmenistan, for Kazakhstan, and for Kyrgyzstan, definitely. This is the only chance. So uh, when we become loud, uh, other players, other companies that will realize they are creative as well. Or maybe some conservative co companies, their top managers might decide they need more creativity inside their companies. And they might start cooperation with creative businesses. This, this will be a great step. At some stage, uh, inevitably, the governments will notice. They will participate. But we should not, you know, at this stage, we should not focus on bringing them in, on, on con 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 uh, convincing them. First of all, we need to have this power inside ourselves. We should have this uh, confidence. And uh, therefore, I think this forum is very, very important. Uh, I hope next year it will happen in Bishkek. I think it's time, uh, in from the practical point of view, to start you know, some uh, contribution from the participants as well. Some small contribution, maybe very, very subsidized, but to make this forum a little bit less dependent on sponsorship. And then uh, I hope that British Council will be able to hold to, to participate and uh, contribute to this forum for 20 more years. But also, uh, I believe that we as a community, we should contribute. Next year, let's do it. Let's, let's put our contribution. Mr. Lionel Barber, because it is perfectly possible, it is perfectly possible to persuade the editor of the Financial Times to do a supplement on creative business in, in Central Asia. It's, it's perfectly possible to do. Uh, Claire. Well, that's our first uh, action note here. <laughs> we'll hold you to that, Martin. Um, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome again. Uh, and uh, yeah, really happy to be back in Tashkent. Um, I think just to say, first of all, obviously, there's a, we've been talking a bit about the history uh, and the British Council's role in Creative Central Asia. Um, I mean, we, you know, initiated Creative Central Asia as a cultural relations organization. So it was always going to be about how uh, that the, the debate and the discussion and the sharing was taken forward uh, by partners in country. So we are definitely very keen to continue to support Creative Central Asia, you know, in some way. Uh, but we certainly know that it needs to have a life of its own and be taken forward by, by everyone here in this room and beyond. Um, I think the format of this year's uh, forum in comparison to the previous couple of years is particularly set up for that. Um, it's really, really discussion-based, uh, as you can see, really workshop-based, and there's, uh, you know, there is action planning at the end where we are trying to make a commitment about what happens next. So I think that's really important. And I think the two themes themselves are also really, really vital. So how do we organize ourselves as a sector? Um, 
uh, that's really crucial to how, uh, how this gets taken forward within the community. Um, and what are the skills and expertise and what's the, you know, what, what are the gaps that are missing? So I think those two will give us a lot of food for thought as to what happens next. Um, and I think the question will be, you know, what is the role that the British Council can play to add value to that? And what's the role also for the UK ongoing? What's the role for our you know, UK participants and partners? Um, where is that interesting debate happening with the UK and Central Asia? Um, I personally think it would be uh, great to look at having more continuity through the year rather than just having you know, one, one forum and look at continued activity. Um, really keen to hear everyone's ideas of, you know, as both John and Danny have said, of what, what, you know, what should that be and what are the gaps? Um, and uh, just to say, kind of from the British Council point of view, we did set this up as a three-year pilot. Um, so we are doing a formal evaluation this year. Uh, so we have a colleague, uh, Nana, from Tom Fleming Consultancy, who's with us in, in Tashkent for the next couple of days. And we'll be following up as well with, with various of people here for conversations around what has worked and what do we want to do in the future. Um, and yeah, just as I said, we're very keen to use this forum and the structure of the forum this year to really uh, hear everyone's ideas and make a commitment for what happens next. Great. Um, we have run out of time. Um, I keep seeing numbers being flashed at me from the front row. That's very bold and you're absolutely right. It's now down to one. Um, so um, I think we... Um, have done what we set out to do in this session. Just to repeat, this is not the end of this conversation. It's the beginning of this conversation. Um, and I think um, the key considerations have been clearly articulated by our three guests on the panel. All four of us will be here for the whole of the next two days, so please do uh, come and uh, push us in a corner and give us your views. Um, and I'm now going to look in general direction of Galina to ask whether you have any housekeeping announcements you want to make. If not, I will pronounce the end of the session. Ah, you're going to wind up, Kate. Okay, fine. Kate, over to you. Thank you, everybody. I think that's um, drawn us nicely to the point where I can introduce what happens next. So you've had a lot of listening so far this morning. Um, if you can bear with me for another few minutes. I'm very impressed that we've kept the time so far, so I'll try not to delay you. Um, we'll take a break shortly, and I'd encourage you to use that break um, wisely to do your networking. Um, but I'd also encourage you to try to move on to the next session slightly ahead of time so that we're ready to actually begin those sessions um, and they start again at 12 o'clock. Um, so we've been talking about the what to do next, the who's going to do it and how we're going to do it. And as we move into the next sessions, we're going to start exploring that in some smaller themes in groups. And as we said at the start today, it's very participative. We're going to expect you to give your ideas and, um, and come back to us with something at the end of the day. Um, one thing I'm going to introduce to you now, you may have seen it at the bottom of your timetable for today and also for tomorrow, is that the steering group felt that this opportunity of coming together in this third year would be an opportunity for us all in the room to create something of a manifesto a way in which we move forward, a way in which we address the what happens next, who does it, and how we do it. And we thought that we would be looking at themes of how we address ourselves as the creative and cultural sector. So um, some of the things that Denir was talking about there, about how we actually represent ourselves, and who do we represent ourselves to? how we address ourselves to government, how we address ourselves to schools and universities, how we think about the education of our future um, workforce and audience, how we address ourselves to the private sector partners that we may, some of our skills may support and engage with, and how we address ourselves to the parents of the next generation, and importantly, how as 
a group of countries in Creative and Central Asia, how we address ourselves to our peers around the world. And so what we've devised is a session coming up um, after the break, which will span the rest of the morning and move into the afternoon. And we're gonna, you're going to work in three different working groups. There's details in your um, agenda for the day. The working groups are all in separate rooms, and there'll be colleagues to help you in the lobby area just outside of this room to find those rooms. As I say, we start at 12. It would be really great if you could make sure you're in your rooms just before 12, because it's going to be quite tight timetabling. Um, for the first session this morning before lunch, you'll be having presentations of case studies. So I think in different groups, 10 to 12 different presentations within an hour. So they're going to be short, snappy, very informative. I encourage you to take lots of notes and to, to help them move forward and get through them. And then after lunch, we're going to be actually asking you to start to work as a team um, within that room. And before you start to make that day, that section of the day run smoothly, we'd like you to identify a member of the group who will take notes and a member of the group that will be our, a timekeeper. And then also identify somebody who is going to present back to the entire room at the end of the day in our plenary session. What we're aiming to do is kind of gather all the, the, the feedback from the individual working groups and move towards the end of tomorrow towards the manifesto. So within the first hour, and your, your leaders in the rooms will go through this with you again, but within the first hour, we're obviously going to be sharing. And then we'd like you to share with each other what you think is the most important um, opportunity that you can agree on to address the particular topic of your working group for the day. Um, it'll be that that we want you to present back to us, and you'll have about 15 or 20 minutes to share the findings of your group towards the end of the day today. Okay? Yeah, one more thing. Just two things that I would like to highlight before we break into the groups. Uh, there is a Telegram group, which is called CCA 2019. So it already has 65 members. And please join, because I think this is the beginning as a platform for people to start to communicate before we develop a proper digital platform for you. And the second is please use, ha use hashtag, which is CCA Tashkent, when you post something on your Instagram account or Facebook page or Twitter, so we can just follow all your comments. Okay? So please have a break, and thank you very much for this morning. Thank you. <laughs>